Hey guys, it's Snow. So before we get into the Satura guide, I just wanted to cover rotations a bit for Satura, the stun lock rotations, because what you're going to find out in this video is we cover so much different variations that it gets a bit confusing. We covered things like whether you're vanishing, whether you're not vanishing for the cheap shot for the extra combo points, whether you blade flurry, whether you don't blade flurry, whether you're lance, whether you hoard, whether you use a hodge from a paladin. There's just so many variations of ways you can do the stun lock rotation on Satura that I thought when I was editing this, this is getting a little bit confusing. So I thought what I would do, the best way to present this for you guys is I still want to give you guys this video because we had for Yenzi and we had just Wu in the chat while we were going over the Satura um, basics and mechanics. So it is a very um, useful video, I think, for a lot of rogues as we were discussing the pluses and minuses of what you can do on Satura to min-max and, and get your rotations better there. But what I think I will do is I will add an extra guide on my Classic Rowcraft website where I will just cover just all the different rotations you can do just on Sutura. So it would be a rotation focused guide just for the Sutura stun lock in particular. So check below this video in a couple of days after I release it, I'll put the link in the video, but I will also put the link uh, in the Discord as well. So if you're not in my Discord, make sure you join the Discord. Uh, I will put the extra rotation Sutura guide there as well. All right, guys. So for today's video, we are going to cover Satura. We're going to go over how to pass well on Satura, how to do a lot of DPS on Satura. Hopefully, um, this should help you get your your Satura 99 pass if you are in a guild that's capable of doing that. And yeah, so so basically, Satura is a fight that's all made up of cleave, um, of of rotations, and 99% of Satura, I'd say, is just is just the 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 entry. The, the setup for Satura determines like 99% of your actual pass. Um, so yeah, a lot of this is going to be us talking about the setup and and what you can do there. But we're also going to cover rotations, obviously, double trinket usage, lips, evasions, things like that. But uh, yeah, let's get into it. So uh, for Satura stun setup, there's two usual options that you can do as a raid. So if you're on a land side, most people like to open up with a hodge because you guys have paladins who can hodge. For horde side, usually it's the rogues opening up with the stun. Those, those are usually uh, the way it's done. Now, on a land side and horde side, usually you want to try to have them stun close together. This is, this is just standard because of cleave. Okay, so progress goes in and you'll see that they try to stun everything with a hodge here. So you see hodge, 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 everything's hodged. It makes it super, super easy for a land side. I, I think it's just generally the, the easiest opener is to just hodge them because you can do that from range. You don't have to worry about your rogues being in range to make sure they stun everything properly. Uh, hodge just makes it way easier for a land side. Now, as far as like what stun lock rotation you guys should be doing, the standard one that most guilds are running, if you are Lance here, you can see is kidney shot after, right? So they do hodge and then you have one rogue assigned to each, each add and also Satura if you want. And you'll see the kidney shot come out like right here, right? See the kidney shots come out. So you typically that's uh, that's your rotation on the land side is you open with a hodge then you have your rogues kidney shot him after and if you're in a quick kill guild that usually is enough to kill the adds. If they're not dead by the time the kidney shot ends you can vanish cheap shot um, is, is what you can follow that up with. So you do hodge into kidney shot into vanish cheap shot it is roughly the rotation. In a good guild that kills very fast though uh, you won't need the vanish cheap shot at all the adds will be dead by this time. On horde side usually it's up to the rogues so usually you do vanish cheap shot if you are running in like this. So um, th there's two ways, I guess, on Horde side that you can do the, the stun for the entry. You always want to open with a cheap shot in general, and you want them stunned close together. So the, ideally, the closer together they can be stunned, the better because you can cleave everything down. Now for, for Horde side, it's a bit tricky because we don't have a ranged stun. So it means you need to bring your rogues either closer, like, like here, like look here, they have their rogues ahead of the raid, right? So you need the rogues closer to, to get the good entry into here. Or your alternative is the rogues just run in as normal with the rest of the raid. Then they vanish cheap shot because um, obviously once they get close, they get pulled into combat here. Um, Here you can see just who actually gets like hit out of combat here. So he had to 
he had to vanish cheap shot uh, to, to get his cheap shot off. But ideally, you either run in with the raid and vanish cheap shot to start, or you stealth in ahead of the raid and then a cheap shot open. But either way, for ally for um for horde, you pretty much just have that option. You cheap shot into kidney shot, basically, or you can cheap shot, cheap shot, kidney shot. Just just be aware that if you do two cheap shots in a row, it is diminishing returns. Okay, so just be aware of that. If you do cheap shot like vanish cheap shot, be aware that it is going to diminish returns the second cheap shot, so it'll be a lower duration. Right, so uh, yeah, as just we just said in the chat, you, know, you can cheap shot, Cinder Strike T, Renataki, Vanish cheap shot into Kidney. So basically, as as Horde, it, it's a lot more finicky. As Alliance, it's super simple. As a Rogue on Alliance, they, they just hodge and then they just have to build up enough points for a nice Kidney shot. The Kidney shot is good and then if they need it, they Vanish cheap shot. For Horde side, because so much of the stun is up to the Rogue to sort out, you, you really have to be quick on the cheap shots. On the kidney shots, you, you can't screw up there, uh, unfortunately. Now, please tell your warriors not to just like charge in and such, because if they if they like run in with a stun at the start, it's gonna di your cheap shot, which is gonna screw up your own rotation. So make sure that you um yeah make sure you talk to your warriors that they're not charging in and 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 ruining the diminishing returns, because because their stun is on the same diminishing returns as cheap shot. If, if your warriors are just like running in there and stunning at the start, it's going to screw up the horde rogues rotation um, a lot. So th they should absolutely not be not be charging in like that. Just just uh, just keep that in mind. Now it doesn't happen in this clip, but it has happened on some of my raids where the warriors didn't know and then they charge in and then uh, my cheap shot is on diminishing returns and it screws up the, the entire stun luck. Now as far as should the... The stun rogues be swords or daggers. Um, they can still be daggers. Obviously, it's more ideal if they are swords. One thing I have been playing around with is as a dagger rogue, you can also actually do a uh, cheap shot into backstab and then a thistle tea, which will be a 100 energy thistle tea um, into backstab, backstab kidney shot. Because cheap shot backstab takes you to zero energy. Right, because you have one tick in that time, so you you be able to cheap shot backstab you at zero energy, then you T, then you backstab backstab kidney shot. You shouldn't miss any globals if you do the cheap shot backstab, um, T backstab backstab kidney shot. If you want to go with that rotation, um, and then there's other variations where you can also vanish and cheap shot again and things like that. Um, yeah, that's that's the thing. Um. So Yenzi's point is the whole blade flurry energy requirements. That's why I was thinking also that the pre-pop blade flurry might just be like the best way to go with 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 that. If if you're trying to do it as a dagger rogue. Um that because that was always my issue as a dagger rogue is trying to fit in like where do I blade flurry? Because if if I do that combination, I don't have I don't have the energy to blade flurry as well. And but I think it just works out anyway that it's more efficient to just run in there with blade flurry. I, th I think that's the, the general rotation. It is to just run in there with Blade Flurry, then you have 100 energy when you go in there anyway, and then you just do your normal stun rotation. I, I feel like it it's been better for me to just have Blade Flurry going as, as I run in there already. Like by the time the ads die, depending on how fast your guild kills, the, by the time the ads die, you still have so much Blade Flurry time. All right, like like here, he's, he's still got like five, six seconds left on his Blade Flurry. So for, um, I know for Jess Wu, he does, I mean, he's in chat, so he can tell you guys right now. He does cheap shot, like, he, BF, Sinister Strike T, Renataki's, Vanish, cheap shot, Kidney. It is, like, his ideal combo if he's a stun rogue. Now for Alan's side, if we go back to the Alan side, um, obviously this is, is way easier. Like, uh, if, if you want to pre-pop, because you're not, you're not uh, in charge of the cheap shot on Alan side a lot of the times. A lot of times on Alan side, you're just running in, which would make it even easier. So I think for Alan side, for sure, you just pre pop like Blade Flurry at least as you run in, and then get AR up like uh, pretty quickly into that. I think AR, as for Yenzi said, I think AR, um, it's okay to pop it once you're already on there. Like you get, maybe you get like a cheap shot up or you get your initial opener in and then AR. But I think BF, for sure is super valuable to pop it early because in a lot of these fast kills unless your guild doesn't kill fast we're seeing that the ads are just dying way before your bf ends right so here as well like it's tricky to get full value here 
Fienzi actually got really good value because he was able to cleave those two guards and then he was able to like cleave this guard with with the boss. But a lot of the times like uh, you're not going to get this ideal like BF positioning and um, it is going to go to waste. Like like on just Wu's one, when the guards were all dead here, uh, that's when the last guard dies. He still got 7 seconds of Blade Flurry up. Yeah, so I think that that is the play. You you BF on pull, and then you AR like early into the rotation. It is I think the way to go here. So if you are the stun rogue, I think the way to go is yeah you pop blade flurry for your rotation. You pop blade flurry pre pop it even if you want. Then AR once you're on the mobs for for a little bit. So you get your AR once you got your rotation going on the mobs. You skip slice and dice. Um, in general, because if you're stunning as well, you, you don't really have the energies and globals to fit it in really well. The slice and dice, you're better off just going for full stun and DPS instead of getting slice and dice up. And if you are not stunning though, then you do your usual rotation, which is you get your slice and dice up, you pop your cleave damage and you go crazy, right? But if you are stunning as well, I don't think you go for the slice and dice. Uh, it, it's too tight on all your globals on the stuns and it... um. And, and, and it uses up valuable energy that you need for, for your other um, stun rotations and such. Yeah, so that's your rotation in Satura. Now the question for Satura that differs from other mobs is do you want to evasion at the start? So here you can see um, just Wu evasions going into it. Right? Now, if your kill time is super, super quick, if you, your kill time is super, super quick, you can evasion um, at the start. So you can see here, evasion's here for safety. Because um, if anyone like is laid on the stun or stun breaks or something, he doesn't want to get knocked away basically. And, and uh, this this helps with the evasion at the stun. You shouldn't do this if your kill time isn't as fast as his though, because you need the evasion for for actually killing Satura if, if you don't, guys don't kill fast enough. What he does is he evasions for the start because he can get away with it. You can see here by the time his... Uh, his evasion is done he can survive just long enough to then pop a late lit and then that's good enough to kill Satura and if you're in a guild that doesn't kill as fast as just Wu or Fienzi or, or like any of these top top tier guilds you need both cooldowns for Satura so you, you can't actually blow those on the ads because um uh, because you need them for the Satura kill otherwise you're gonna have to run out you, you can't divide your, your potion cooldown and invasion cooldown if you're a slower kill guild. But if you're on fast kill guild like this, then you can put use one for the adds here to not get knocked back to like guarantee. And then you can use the other one to um to to get on Satura when he's whirling. So this is what a more normal Satura kill speed would look like, right? So this is a more normal kill speed. So you see I need evasion here. So evasion, we're just killing him, we're just killing him. And Satura's not going to be instantly dead, right? So I'm, I'm going to have to lip here again in a second. Somehow I was just a dodging god here though. I, I was just like dodging everything here somehow. And then I just had to use the lip right at the end there when he started whirlwinding again. I had a lip going. So for like an average kill guild, like see if I didn't dodge like a god there here, I would have had to lip... Um, a little bit earlier as well because someone got the stun in right there so like like right here I'll probably have to lip so for an average kill guild you will need both evasion and lip um, it, it just depends on your kill times okay so as far as double trinkets go for Satura average Joe um, you still can you still can double trinket on Satura so you, you open with the Renatakis here to get extra energy for the cleave and for the stun rotation and then you um, use Earth Strike once the 10 second cooldown is up. So Renatakis will put your, your trinkets on the 10 second cooldown and then you can Earth Strike after. Okay, so to, to sum up, your rotation for Satura is you're gonna go in here. Now I would recommend you pop Blade Flurry as you're going in, if you're going in. Now just be careful, obviously if you're stealth you don't want to get aggro but if you are on Horde, you pop Blade Flurry. If you're on Lions, you pop Blade Flurry is going in. I think Blade Flurry on entry is the best way to go with your Blade Flurry. Um, then you go into your stun rotation. So for Lions, that is Hodge. And then the Rogues will build up points for a Kidney Shot. For Horde, that is usually either like 
a Vanish Cheap Shot or a Cheap Shot. If you're pop pre-popping Blade Flurry, that would probably be a Vanish Cheap Shot. Um, and then you go into a Kidney Shot after that, typically, is, is your rough stun rotation. Um, now, as far as that, once you are on Satura, you're usually not popping your Slice and Dice until... Uh, until after the ads are dead because you don't have the spare energy and globals and such to worry about slice and dicing until after you have your stun lock rotation out so after your kidney shot then you could start possibly thinking about adding in your slice and dice but in general most rogues i'm seeing are not worrying about the stun or are not worrying about the slice and dice until after the ads are dealt, dealt with all right guys so that was the satura guide now a reminder i will have a second satura rotation guide that will be live on the website in a couple of days and i will announce that in the discord as well so if you're not in the discord get into the discord and i will be uh, dropping the link in there once it's all done and up on the website all right so take care have fun and i'll see you guys in the next video